thank you very much for your presentation, Professor Marano. Um, I'm trying to share my screen. Um, okay, now we can see. Is it okay? So go ahead, please. Good, good. It's okay. I'm going to talk about seismic risk mitigation at the urban scale and community resilience with particular reference to a case study we had the opportunity to consider after the 2012 Northern Italy earthquake. So it's a completely different topic from the topic that we have heard um, by the previous um, speaker. I will talk briefly about study motivation. I will show the case study of Concordia sulla Secchia, that is a town uh, that was hit, uh, severely hit by the Northern Italian earthquake. I will talk about housing recovery, seismic risk, seismic risk mitigation at the urban scale, vulnerability, damage and performance assessment, and finally, cost analysis. If you look at the European hazard map by INGV on the left of my slide, you can immediately realize that Italy is one of the, mo of the most earthquake prone countries in Europe. In fact, Italian disaster relief funds have been uh, were, were deli delivered over the last 50 years amount at about 125 billion euros. It's a huge amount of money. A few words about, about the earthquake, uh, the Northern Italy earthquake that occurred in May 2029 of the 2012. We had two main shocks of magnitude 5.9 or 6, depending on the survey system. And there was a very superficial earthquake. In fact, the hypocenter depth was about six kilometers. The maximum recorded peak ground acceleration was 0.35 G. And the fault length that developed from the east to the west was about 40 kilometers. We had a huge number of aftershocks, let's say more than 200, and uh, an extensive damage of cultural heritage and industrial structures. But we were very lucky because we had low exposure of population due to the night time. In this slide, you can see some example of structural damage of cultural heritage. You can see medieval towers and castles, you can see palaces and churches, included tower, bell towers. And you can see here in the slide, some examples of structural damage of industrial structure, not only reinforced concrete and steel industrial, um, industrial buildings, but also facilities and, and stocks. Some data about socioeconomic issues of the most hit, of the most exposed area. Uh, we had 550,000 affected inhabitants, 45,000, sorry, 45,000 displaced household, 300 injured, 21 casual, 28 casualties, 58% of enterprises had to shut down and the global damage of more than 13 billion euros. This damage uh, includes direct losses that are caused by the aspect to buildings and infrastructure, but also indirect losses that include the, the damage caused to the community, to the community in, the, in the shape of social or economic uh, damage. The government delivered only 8.2 billion euros to, as a recovery fund, of which 5.3 billion were, uh, were devoted for building repair. 51% uh, for private building repair, 36% for productive repair, buildings repair, 7% for public buildings, and 6% for temporary construction. Concerning the case study, that is a town, a small town, Concordia sulla Secchia, that was one of the most damaged town of the highest impact area. 
you can see in the graph uh, the classification of the buildings of Concordia and under and as uh, structural typologies and level of damage. The level of damage, the measure of damage is performed by means of European macro, uh, macro seismic damage scale where D0 means no damage and D5 means full collapse. As you can observe, the, the highest number of buildings in Concordia it has a masonry structure and also the masonry structure were the most damaged buildings of the town. Now the concept of housing recovery is very important because it's a measure of community resilience. And uh, it is a very difficult, and housing recovery is very difficult to assess and to quantify because it depends on psychological, social and economic aspects. However, it is a key element in the recovery process. So we decided to study this particular aspect of reconstruction. The Emilia-Romagna region delivered the disaster relief funds under three main chapters. The first one was concerning the business losses and uh, the application has to be done, had to be done on the Stinge platform. The second was uh, heritage losses uh, by applying on the Mude platform. And finally, displaced households could apply for a contribution for autonomous setup or for removable prefabricated living modules. And it, you can see in the picture here on the left, uh, the new town built with removable prefabricated modules. And it's interesting to know that people have lived there for more than five years. It's very difficult to find information concerning housing recovery. Significant information on housing recovery and recovery funds has been reported by two town journals over a number of years, specifically from 2012 to 2019. And we are, I'm talking about the Concordia and Mirandola municipality journals. It is interesting to look at the titles they, are, they report um, just in the aftermath of the disaster. They say, together we will succeed or the will and the courage to start over. And this is very particular because, I mean, from these uh, sentences, you can understand how strong is the will of this population to start over. Now, the number of displaced people was computed uh, as a summation between the number of people uh, living in prefabricated models and the number of people with autonomous setup. And the cases of Concordia and Mirandola were compared in these plots. Uh, you can see that at the very beginning in 2012 here, the number of displaced people were about 30% of the number of inhabitants for both of the town, the, both of the towns, despite they have a very different uh, um, size. And you also can observe that the displacement, the number of displaced people in time decreases following an exponential trend. And this trend is confirmed by the literature. And it is very interesting because it's a common, common characteristics of the two towns. Also from this graph, from the upper graph, you can, understand, you can see that fund allocation follows the same trend in time for both of the towns. And in the bottom graphs, you can see a classification of structural typologies and the uh, damage distribution for both of the towns. You can see in red, the data of Concordia town and in blue, the data of Mirandola town. And you can see that most than 70% of the buildings are masonry buildings. And you also can observe that the damage distribution of, the, of both of the towns is very, very similar. Now the point is, how can we use seismic risk mitigation at the urban scale in order to reduce uh, the, the damage and also uh, to um, speed up housing recovery? So seismic risk mitigation can speed up housing recovery and increase community resilience. 
It can be achieved by reducing structural vulnerability, carrying out strengthening work on buildings at the urban scale. And so we built a what-if scenario in order to show what happens when preventive mitigation strategies are implemented. First of all, a detailed post-earthquake survey was performed by Labora, that is a lab of the University of Ferrara, as commissioned by the Emilia-Romagna region. The survey included geometrical and structural feature of, of all the buildings. In a second step, we, um, the strengthening works have been defined for the existing structural typologies. Okay, I will resume the considered strengthening works. In the first slide, we can see the masonry strengthening works. We consider local intervention techniques such as ring beam tie rod system in order to promote global box-like behavior as you can see in figure one or also out of plane racing frame to promote in plane failure mode of walls. And as you can see in picture two, Finally, also global intervention technique has been, were considered like textile reinforced mortar technique in order to increase the global bearing capacity of the walls. And you can see the picture in figure three. Same work was done for reinforced concrete structure. So we consider local intervention technique as externally bonded reinforcement to increase shear strength and ductility of columns embedded through section technique in order to increase shear strength of beams. And finally, as a global intervention techniques, we consider in field reinforced concrete shear wall to promote the wall, the frame wall dual system behavior and to increase the bearing capacity of the reinforced concrete structure. Of course, uh, we, we couldn't study all the town because it's too wide. And so we focused our attention on the emergency limit condition subsystem, which is defined by the National Civil Protection Department. And for Concordia, it includes four strategic buildings that host essential function during the emergency and 38 interfering buildings that might affect emergency connection routes. The emergency limit condition subsystem in, in the concept of the, of the civil protection department has to survive in order to bring aid to the population after a major disaster. Now you can see on the right, the what if scenario that was defined. And so this, uh, you know, are the list of the strengthening work we have considered. After the definition of strengthened, of strengthened ELC subsystem, we did the evaluation of vulnerability index and mean damage grade, the evaluation of the number of displaced people, and finally, the cost analysis. So the vulnerability, the vulnerability assessment using uh, was assessed, was performed by using an indirect method. And particularly, we computed the vulnerability index as proposed by GNDT forms in 204, and then modified by many authors in order to include buildings in aggregate construction. So the idea is to compute the vulnerability index by summing up 16 terms that are composed by scores and, and weight coefficients that are determined by visual inspection of the building. And they are associated to vulnerability classes from A, the less vulnerable, to D, the most vulnerable. The main, the main geometrical and structural feature affecting the seismic response are accounted for, such as type of structural system, in plan and in hay regularity, roofing system and maintenance condition. The vulnerability index is then normalized in order to range between 1 and 100. Damage assessment is performed by using a macro seismic approach. And the mean damage grade is computed following the formulation by Lagomarsino and Giovinazzi. 
effectively. As you can see from the equation, uh, the mean damage grade depends on the earthquake intensity according to the EMS scale. So depends on the vulnerability parameter that is related to the vulnerability index through empirical relationships that are defined by the literature. A Q ductility factor that also is known by the literature. And finally, a shaping function F that uh, is used for earthquake intensities lower than seven as suggested by Bernardini. Okay, the, view, the mean damage grade ranges between zero and five, where zero it means no damage and five means full collapse. Now let's see results. So let's consider the impact of the strengthening works on vulnerability index. As you can see from the table, the vulnerability index reduction amounts to 15% for local intervention techniques and 35% for global intervention techniques for both masonry and reinforced concrete structure. And looking at the strengthening works impact on mean damage grade, we can observe that the reduction of the mean damage grade amounts to 10% for local intervention techniques and is between 15 and 25% for global intervention techniques, depending on uh, respectively for masonry and reinforced concrete structure. On the right, you can see a visual representation of the mean damage grade for an earthquake intensity of 7.5 that is the intensity that we recorded during the earthquake in 2012. You can see on the left, uh, the mean damage grade of, of, the, of the ELC subsystem without work, um, strengthening works. And you can see that uh, the, the dominant uh, level of damage is D3 and D4. If we look at the right, we can see the effect of the strengthening work and we can appreciate that the, the most common level of damage is D1 and D2. So the effect of strengthening work on mean damage grade is substantial. The damage probability was computed, was, was worked out, uh, assuming the damage cumulative distribution function based on the beta distribution as proposed by Vicente and also the number of displaced people were uh, computed by using the formulation by Bramerini. And this is the result. You can see the impact of the strengthening work on damage probability as a function of earthquake intensity for both masonry and reinforced concrete structure. And you can observe that the reduction of the probability uh, of the damage probability for a given earthquake intensity is definitely appreciable in both cases. And concerning the impact of strengthening work on the number of displaced people, you can see the relationship here between the number of displaced people and the earthquake intensity. If we look at the earthquake intensity of 7.5, we can observe a reduction of the number of displaced people of about 84%. That is really a substantial reduction. And the blue line is the, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the function for the strengthening work and the red line is the situation without the strengthening works. It is also possible to compute uh, the strengthening work impact on the ELC subsystem survival probability. Prob survival probability. Okay, uh, it can be done if we think that the ELC subsystem is a, is a system in series. That means that works like a weakest link system. In this way, the survival probability can be computed as for a series system. And in the plot, you can see the survival probability as a function of the earthquake intensity. And you can see the blue line that is the original proba uh, survival probability without a strengthening work. No, sorry. The red line is the one without strengthening work. And the blue line is the survival probability with 
the strengthening work. And you can see, of course, that for an earthquake intensity of 7.5, we get an 85% of probability of survival for the ELC subsystem. And this is really important. Finally, the cost analysis. Okay, if we look at the cost for the CIS, for the as-built configuration, we can see that we have no cost for retrofit, but we have 12 million euros for uh, uh, reconstruction. If we consider the configuration with the strengthening works, we can see we can evaluate 4 million euros for retrofit and 3.5 million euros for reconstruction for a total of less than 8 million euros. With a global, with an overall saving of 35%. But here we are talking about direct test, direct cost. If we consider also indirect cost, you know, there will be much, much higher difference. In fact, if housing recovering costs are included along with lost business revenues, consideration of strengthening work costs would indicate significantly higher overall savings. And so I am going to conclude. I can say preemptive implementation of seismic risk mitigation strategies is the most effective way to reduce overall damage and increase community resilience. The promotion of seismic risk mitigation strategies is of paramount importance. In fact, the Italian government has recently introduced a tax break of 85% over five years of the structural intervention cost, and it was called the SISMA bonus. But communities may not have sufficient knowledge or will to understand the benefits of mitigation strategies, so it is our responsibility, and I mean of institution and academia, to raise risk awareness and actively cooperate with communities to adopt proper mitigation strategies. Indirect methods are powerful tools to proactively assess the efficacy of different mitigation strategies. And concerning GNDT forms, they, they are a very powerful tool but they should be updated in order to include a wider range of strengthening work options and lead to a more realistic evaluation of reduction of buildings vulnerability and expect damage. Then I would like, I would finally, I would like to thank, uh, to acknowledge the significant contribution of my co-authors, particularly Dr. Dr. Basaglia and Professor Spacone of the University of Chieti Pascara and Professor Pelà by UPC of Barcelona. Our scientific contribution will be published very soon on the Bulletin of Earthquake Engineering. And to you, thank you very much for your attention.